Welcome back to our webinar series. Today we are going to talk about Microscale Thermophoresis, MST, which is one of the techniques that we have at our facility, the Biolab. The Biolab is located at the Nova School of Sciences and Technology and, gather, and gathers in a single unit a unique set of state-of-the-art biophysical and biological techniques, namely circular dichroism, differential scanning calorimetry, flow cytometry, microscale thermophoresis and multiparametric surface plasma resonance. If you are interested in knowing more about us, our website is in the description box of this video. In this presentation, I will talk about the principles, setup and signal of microscale thermophoresis. I will also present you our instrument and explain how to develop an assay, as well as give you some application examples. Microscale thermophoresis, MST, is a biophysical technique that measures the strength of the interaction between two molecules by detecting variations in fluorescence signal as a result of an infrared laser-induced temperature change. The range of the variation in the fluorescence signal correlates with the binding of a ligand to the fluorescent target. There are two major factors contributing to the MST signal the temperature-related intensity change, trick, and thermophoresis. Both trick and thermophoresis are influenced by binding events and therefore contribute to the overall recorded MST signal. Trick is an effect where the fluorescent intensity of a fluorophore is temperature-dependent. The extent of the temperature dependence is strongly related to the chemical environment of the fluorophore, which can be affected by the binding of a ligand to the target. Thermophoresis is the movement of fluorescent molecules along temperature gradients, which results in a quantifiable change in their local concentration and therefore of the observed fluorescence. The extent of the concentration change depends on the molecule's overall propri properties like size, charge and conformation. Thus, this technique is highly sensitive to virtually any change in molecular properties allowing for a precise quantification of molecular events independent of the size or nature of the investigated specimen being a powerful technique to quantify biomolecular interactions. This is the overall setup of the MST optics. MST is measured in capillaries with a total volume of 4 microliters. The capillary contains the fluorescent molecule and the binding partner. The fluorescent molecule in solution is excited and the emitted fluorescence is collected. An infrared laser coupled into the light path of the fluorescent excitation emission is focused into the capillary to produce a microscopic temperature gradient on the exact spot where fluorescence emission is detected. The fluorescence within the capillary is excited and detected through the same objective. Thermophoresis of fluorescent molecules through the temperature gradient is detected. In an MST experiment, initially the infrared laser is off, the molecules are homogeneously distributed and the constant initial fluorescence is detected. Then the infrared laser is switched on and the focused area is heated immediately. Within the first second after activation of the infrared laser, the T-jump is observed, which corresponds to a rapid change in fluorophore properties due to the fast temperature change. The increase of temperature leads to a strong decrease in fluorescence before the thermophoretic molecule transport sets in. Subsequently, thermophoretic movement of the fluorescently labeled molecules out of the heated sample volume can be detected. Due to the thermophoretic molecular motion, the fluorescence slowly decreases. Steady state is reached, typically the fluorescence change is measured for 30 seconds. After the activation of the infrared laser, an inverse T-jump occurs, the solution cools down. The fluorescent molecules diffuse back and the fluorescence signal increases. For analysis, the change in MST signal is expressed as a change in the normalized fluorescence, delta F norm, which is defined 
as F1 div divided by F0. Titration of the non-fluorescent ligands results in a gradual change in MST, which is plotted as delta F norm against the ligand concentration to yield a dose response curve, which can be fitted to derive binding constants. Our instrument is the Nanotemper Monolith NT115 Blue Red configuration. It's very versatile. Each mining experiment takes approximately 15 minutes of reading time, can detect KDs from 1 nanomolar to 500 macromolar, requires minimal sample material, typically 1 to 10 nanomolar of the labeled interaction partner and the dilution series of the unlabeled ligand starting about 20 fold above the expected dissociation constant. For standard applications, 4 microliters of sample material is loaded in the capillary and 16 capillaries are used per experiment. Temperature is controlled and can be set from 22 to 45 degrees Celsius, and this device has two fluorescence channels, blue and red. The monolith can monitor the binding affinity between all kinds of biomolecules under close to native conditions, immobilization free, in a solution of choice ranging from standard buffers to complex bioliquids, including blood serum and cell isates. The main applications of MST are binding affinity measurements, KD determination. Competition says you can assess relative affinities or two or more molecules for the same target, single dose and affinity screens, as well as derive additional information for, from your affinity assays, namely study oligomerization and folding, as well as gather information about stoichiometry and thermodynamics, but these applications require offline data handling not supported by the Monolith software. The Monolith can measure as little as the binding of a single ions, 40 daltons, or small molecules, 300 daltons, to a target, as well as the binding of large complexes such as ribosomes. Now, regarding assay development, AMST experiment is set as a titration experiment, 16 capillaries. The concentration of the fluorescently labeled molecule is kept constant and the concentration of the unlabeled partner is varied. The MST signal will detect the binding by a quantification of the change in the normalized fluorescence. Regarding sample requirements and general advice. Concentration of fluorescent molecules should be in the same range or lower than the expected KD and the highest concentration of ligand should be 20 fold above the expected KD. The final sample volume per trituration point is around, is around 20 microliters. You should use small tubes for the serial dilution. Dilution buffer should not vary in composition in serial dilution. Accurate pipetting is essential. You must mix with pipette instead of vortexing, and you should not touch capillaries in the center. On the topic of sample preparation, the first step is to choose your labeling strategy. There are a few options like expression of a fusion fluorescent protein or labeling one binding partner with an extrinsic fluorophore. Nanotemper has a few protein labeling kits optimized for MST that you can choose depending on your protein. For example, amine reactive, cysteine reactive or each tech specific labeling kits. The Monolith software has four experimental modes. The pretest for checking fluorescence after labeling and establishing basics. Binding check for assay development and qualitative interaction analysis. Binding affinity for quantitative interaction analysis. And the expert mode for unconventional assay setups. The Monolith software gives you instant information about the quality of your assays. Adsorption, aggregation, fluorescence inhomogeneities and low signal noise ratios should be avoided for a successful assay. When adsorption occurs, you can change the capillary type, add detergent or sometimes change your buffer. To avoid aggregation, centrifugation, addition of detergent or changing buffer composition are strategies that can be used. As mentioned, the initial fluorescence of the capillaries should be homogeneous. 
it should not vary above 20%. Inaccurate pipetting is sometimes the cause of fluorescent variation, but you can also need to centrifuge or add detergent. Sometimes the fluorescent variation is lichen dependent and to check that there are tests that can be done to prove it. Now I'll give you some concrete application examples of MST. First we have this paper where where the researchers used MST to study a range of biologically relevant RNA interactions, including peptide RNA interactions, RNA small molecule interactions, and displacement of an RNA bound peptide by a small molecule. In this other paper, MST was used to determine the binding constant of nitrate to the plant nitrate transporter NRT1.1. The wingless beta-catenin signaling pathway is an attractive target for cancer therapy. However, known wingless inhibitors are still far from clinical use. Here, the authors reported that the clinically approved drug axitinib strongly inhibits wingless beta-catenin signaling in vitro and in vivo. MST was used to study binding directly in all cell lysates proving that this technique really is capable of quantifying interactions in complex bioliquids. The results of this study demonstrate that MST is a powerful and practical methodology to quantify interactions between small molecules and protein fibrillar aggregates, which is a, suggests that it can be applied for the identification and development of PET radioligands and potentially of therapeutic candidates for protein misfolding diseases. MST was applied to assess the binding affinity of known small molecule ligands of alpha synuclein fibrils. In addition, a MST assay was also developed for the detection of the interaction between a variety of small molecules and tau fibrils. The aim of this last study was to develop a method combining chiral separation and biophysical techniques to evaluate the enantioselective affinity of original sulfonamide derivatives towards their therapeutic target, the human carbonic anhydrase 1. MST was used to measure the affinities of these compounds to their target. Surface plasma resonance was used as a reference method. KD values obtained using MST and SPR were in good agreement, leading to similar affinity scales despite both approach approaches totally differ. To finish this webinar, I would like to recommend these resources for further information in microscale thermofreezes. Thank you for your attention, and if you have further questions, you can leave them in the comment section of this video or contact me using this email. For more information about the BioLab, this is our website. Thank you once again. Take care.